Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Hail Hardware, your do it center at Hail Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hail Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Greenbrier Golf Course, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. You'll love this beautiful, professionally designed 18-hole course with a bulky golfer in mind. From pro to beginner, Greenbrier will have you returning for more. Enjoy the watered fairways, driving range, full-service restaurant, bar with Wi-Fi, and gift shop. Greenbrier, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. 33 Motorsports Park family racing fun for all ages and skill levels. Three tracks located on M33 in Oscoda County. Come watch or join in the action all year long. Developed for motorcycles, quads, UTVs, and snowmobiles. 33 Motorsports Park. Have fun with your photos at Rose City Drug. In the photo department, get fast processing and have fun by creating unique digital photo gifts on site or online. Save those precious memories at Rose City Drug. 2640 North M33 Rose City or online. Hello everyone and welcome to Michigan Magazine, I'm Barry Stutzman. Here we are in the midst of another beautiful season in Michigan, autumn. When one thinks of Michigan's changing seasons, it's hard not to get poetic. And when one thinks of poetry with Michigan as the topic, it's hard not to think of this week's guest, the late Gwen Frostick of Benzonia. Gwen graced the citizens of Michigan with words of inspiration that when combined with her wonderful drawings and unmistakable calligraphy, captured Michigan moments. Today we bring you words of wisdom from Miss Frostick in an interview circa 1992, where we learned of this gracious lady's amazing work ethic and demanding personality that despite some physical limitations, never wavered, even to the year of her passing in 2001. Then with the holidays coming down the pike, we've got a banana pudding recipe that'll make you the talk of the holiday table. Lorraine Lozana, former owner of Chuck's Soul Food in Pontiac, shares her family recipe that kept her and her husband Chuck's restaurant clientele begging for more. It's all coming up next in this Michigan Magazine Flashback Edition. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com. On this edition of Michigan Magazine, we're in the wilderness of Michigan, in the Northwoods. What's so inspirational about this specific place is that a very famous lady, an inspiration to many people, Miss Gwen Frostick. This is her studio and hall. Not the bushes, but of course her studio that blends into the landscape here in northern Michigan. She's known throughout the world for her fine artistry and poems, inspired by the beauty of nature around her. Gwen Frostick's audience is the world. Her beautiful prints that depict the simplest wonders of nature at their most beautiful are in demand all over the world. Her words of poetry as well as her beautiful prints are in such demand that it keeps 15 presses going Monday through Friday the year round. Gwen, with over 70 years of poetry and print wrapped up in her soul, still keeps a tight rein on the day-to-day -day operations of her worldwide business. Everything seems to be under one roof. The 15 presses are adjacent to the business offices and visible from the gift shop, 
which is unique in itself, incorporating nature into its very essence. Her living quarters are located above all this, very much though within shouting distance. Her work has been appreciated throughout the years by various civic groups and organizations. Her work continues to touch and be an inspiration for all generations. At 86, Gwen can still be found actively creating prints and poetry. How or why did you get into this world of artistry and uh, poetry? Well, <clears throat> I don't think one decides what mm -hmm. they're going to do. It just comes naturally. Mm -hmm. And I've always done artwork. I took my training as an art teacher. And um, so it's just a natural thing. I wanted to make a living and a good one. Mm -hmm. And so I went into it. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that kind of a risk? Take her yourself back uh, when you first got underway? I mean, is it something that you had to do? Yes, yeah, something you had to do. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're the same way. Mm -hmm. it, it's just something that you have to do that you you pay no attention to at the time. You just do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What were your first works that you, that you were involved with? Well, originally I was doing copper work. Oh, I see. And uh, for instance, I would... Uh, do the faces uh, that Mrs. Henry Ford the first used for her flower arrangement. She'd call me and tell me what kind of a flower arrangement she was going to make. And I would make the base to fit it. She was well known for her flower arrangements. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we did bookends and weather vanes and all those kind of things. I had a pretty good business from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the war came along. World War II, <coughs> and, uh, and the sale of copper was ceased, mm -hmm. so I went to work at the bomber plant. Mm -hmm. You worked on, on, on an assembly line type of thing? No, I was a tool designer. A tool designer. I, in high school, I had taken many courses in mechanical drawing, so it was a natural thing for me to go on the tool design. Mm -hmm. And I like tools anyway. Mm -hmm. You had inspiration. What inspired you to do the art that you do? <coughs> Where do the ideas come from? And then again, I think that it's in you or it is. Mm -hmm. And if it's in you, it's got to come out. Mm -hmm. And if it isn't, uh, then just why not do it. Mm -hmm. Tell me, as far as your poetry is concerned, what subjects would be the one that makes your hand go across the paper the most? Uh, thank you for calling it poetry. I don't. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but there again, it's a matter of uh, just naturally coming. Is there a certain place it, you're it's at? It's based upon knowledge. Uh -huh. I read constantly on biology books and all that. Uh, sort of thing, chemistry books. So I have a basic knowledge of how nature goes together. Mm -hmm. And then you just use it from there. Mm -hmm. And then you write down a thought. You don't, you're not writing a book. You write down a thought. Then you enlarge upon that thought. Until, then you leave it on your desk. Isn't there a word that would be better for that? And then you look up, I got Oxford, Webster Dictionary. Look up all these things. And look up every word, so that you get the word that means just exactly what you want it to mean. Mm -hmm. And when the man the other day that came into my office, I have a window that goes right to the floor. And he says, I got a window like that, but I look out there and I can't write stuff like that. How are you going to tell a man like that that you don't get it from looking out the window? Uh-huh, uh-huh. You get it from work, blended. I don't believe in inspiration. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? It's just, uh... I, I don't think inspiration has very much to do with it. I think it's perspiration. Perspiration. <laughs> Thinking about the subject? Yes, and making it part of you. Right, oh, part of you. And then it comes out. Now I just finished the book. Mm -hmm. Just this week. And, <clears throat> and that's over a period of about two years that I 
You've been doing that book. Making the cuts. Having the cuts go. They blend. They are not illustrations. They are uh, like background music. Mm -hmm. Or the words are background music to the cut, whichever way you want to put it. Mm -hmm. But that is the... Uh, and you start out with an idea that that, that came from your reading, mm -hmm. from knowledge. Mm -hmm. When you first started your, your business, so to say, you were doing everything, weren't you? I mean, you did everything from the, the setting of the prints? Yes, I did everything. I had a boy that cleaned the foot the floor, but uh -huh. aside from that, I did it. Uh huh. But but now that you've got uh, what? Now we have 30, about 35, 40 people working. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And they do the printing and the assembling of the packages. They do not do any of the artwork. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I still do all that and mm -hmm. the writing, of mm -hmm. course. In your in your works of words. I understand that the placement of the words is very important yes. also. I set my own type mm -hmm. by hand mm -hmm. because I think the placement of the words on the page are just as important as the words themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very uh, conscious mm -hmm. of how it appears on the page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you this question. I know that you don't like the word, but I want to get your response. What is your favorite word? <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't uh -huh. like that word. Uh -huh. I do not have any favorites of anything. Mm -hmm. Because I think that if you have a favorite, it cuts you out of all the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you liked red, for instance, you could wear a red jacket and a red everything else. But you would hate to have red mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. You, you cut yourself off from feeling anything else. Yes, yes. You cut yourself off from everything else that just and beautiful. In my latest book, there's a segment in that. <clears throat> it starts out about the people, the great majority of people, who just do day-to-day -day activities. They're not concerned about anything. They look up at night and they see the darkness. They do not see anything else. Then there's uh, the middle group of people who uh, are concerned with logic. Everything has to be boxed and put in certain set it together. They look up at night and they see the planets and the stars and they name them mm -hmm. and put um, and check their passages through the sky, so on and so forth. Then there are a few people in every age who uh, look up at the stars and uh, look up at night and see it infinitely. Mm -hmm. Nothing is controlled. Everything is there. Mm -hmm. And there's only a few of those. Mm -hmm. and all the other people follow them. Mm -hmm. Do you think that maybe everyone has to go through all these phases to appreciate no. the final phase, or is there someone no, more ability? No, I don't ability? think so. I think that uh, sometimes even in childhood, I can, re I can remember once when they were painting on a house, and they were painting it ivory, which was a nice color those days, and he didn't paint the top of the porch, the ceiling of the porch. And I said, the, the painter, why are you doing that? Well, why don't you paint that? And he said, oh, I got to get blue paint for that. And I said, why? He said, because it's always blue. I said, no, it doesn't have to be blue. Yes, it's got to be blue. So <clears throat> he went to my father. My father said, if she wants an ivory, it'll be ivory, no matter whether you paint it or not. <laughs> so you see, it comes from the, the backing. My father never told us anything was any good. There were nine of us kids. And nothing, he, if he got three A's and a B, what was the matter with a B? Mm -hmm. He never mentioned three A's that you got. Mm -hmm. But he would back you. No matter what, and at least he didn't mean. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, <clears throat> I've never been afraid to go get the current. And people have spent too much time trying to analyze it. I'm going to make it. It's been said that if you look up at the stars and have a wondrous feeling, your heart delights at the antics of a chickadee, a little toad winks as you pass by, or you wish he would. Then Gwen Frostic prints and poetry is created for you. The Gwen Frostic studios are located on River Road between Frankfurt and Benzonia. We'd like to thank Gwen and her staff for allowing us to film and to visit with Michigan treasure. Gwen Frostic of Benzonia, Michigan. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Rose Valley Winery, committed to making quality wines from locally grown cold-hearted grapes. Rose Valley Winery on Beechwood Road, Rose City. Hingeman Acres, canoe livery and resort on M33 just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Club X Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Club X Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Club X on Mapes Road, Mile. You'll find delicious food and fun at Timber Steakhouse, East County Line Road, South Branch, Michigan. You'll find delicious steaks pizza, and a full menu with the best food in the north. Enjoy the fine food and karaoke fun at Timber Steakhouse, County Line Road, South Branch. On a recent edition of Michigan Magazine, we enjoyed the delicious food and hospitality of Chuck and Lorraine Lozano at Chuck's Soul Food Restaurant near the Pontiac Silverdome. And what? all this is made from scratch. This it don't made, come out of no box. This is made from scratch. You take care of the desserts, Lorraine. Uh, what is it? Uh, I mean, Ma must have, you, was that Ma's uh, apron strings when you were small? And Actually, it was my aunt that I'm named after. My first name is Ethel, and I was named after my aunt Ethel. Uh -huh. And she was a great cook. And uh -huh. she always made a lot of desserts, and I kind of took after her. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is very sweet because it is a caramel icing. Oh, boy. And the icing is made from scratch also with uh, butter and brown sugar. That's one thing you'll find in everything that is prepared at Chuck's, all homemade from scratch. As you'll see here, as Lorraine prepares her famous banana pudding, she begins by placing vanilla wafers evenly on the bottom of her baking dish, then places sliced ripe bananas on another layer. When I peel the bananas, I remove the strings from them. Sometimes they'll have little brown spots, but that's okay. You can cut them out. You want to make sure that the bananas are ripe, not green. It's a better flavor when they're a little more ripe. This on my plier, it consists of two cups of sugar, a cup of flour, and probably half a cup, or half a teaspoon rather, of salt. And I combine those ingredients, mix them up real good. Then I add um, eight egg yolks to two cups of evaporated milk plus two cups of water. And then I put this in a double boiler and let it cook until it thickens. Probably takes about an hour and a half to two hours because I am using a double boiler. If you have the time to watch it closely, you can put it in a regular pot, but you have to stir regular because it'll burn if you don't. But because I'm usually doing other things, I can walk away from this very easily and it not burn. So then what I do is I spoon half of the custard filling over this after I put in a layer of vanilla wafers and about two to three bananas sliced and then the custard 
It looks to me like you've made a few of these up before, Maureen. Every day. <laughs> Every day. Then I put another layer of vanilla wafers. And slice the remaining bananas. Some people like a lot of bananas, but I don't like a lot. I just like the flavor of the banana. This also, by the way, has some vanilla in it. I would say about two teaspoons. Uh -huh. A lot of times I don't measure, <laughs> so it's kind of hard to tell, to tell somebody else how to cook. But I forgot about the vanilla. The vanilla goes in after the custard has cooked. Okay, after you have put all the pudding on there, then you beat the white from nine uh, eggs. And after you beat it quite a bit, you add about two tablespoons of sugar and about a tablespoon of vanilla and beat it until it's light and fluffy. Mm. Then you spread it over the banana pudding make little peaks to make it look pretty. Pretty is one thing, but I'll bet you that is absolutely, oh, yummy. It tastes great. <laughs> and then we put this in the oven for about five to seven minutes or until it's golden brown. Put the oven on 400 to brown it. Oh, great. Take it from us, the finished pudding was delicious. Rich and all, oh, I'll tell you, it was excellent. As was everything at Chuck Soul Food Restaurant near Pontiac. We again thank Lorraine and Chuck for their hospitality and allowing us to share a unique soul food experience with all of you here on Michigan Magazine. Well, you know, it never ceases to amaze me when I find off those Michigan back roads. We've been doing this for over 20 years, and the discoveries keep coming. Wherever you are, Michigan Magazine is there for you to share the fun and excitement we experience each week here on RFD-TV. Take care and be safe. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. TriPoint Connections, a church connecting to God, people, and community. TriPoint Connections invites you to rediscover church in a relaxed, refreshing atmosphere. Join us Saturdays for fellowship and worship. Discount Foods Downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods Downtown Mayo. Randy's Restaurant and Bakery, downtown Rose City. Freshly baked daily, cookies, breads, pastries, donuts, homemade pies, and more. Randy's has a full menu to tackle the heartiest appetite, including pizza and hand-dipped ice cream. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pole. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pole. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com.